Hi, I'm Chad with Move For A Guitar. This lesson is from our series, How to Read Music For Guitar. In this lesson, I'm going to explain how to read tab and how it differs from standard notation. First off, if you like all the diagrams for this series, including the diagrams for this lesson, you can download our free e-guide, How to Read Music For Guitar. But I am working on it right now as I'm filming this lesson, so it might not be available as you're watching this lesson. If it is available, a link will pop up on the screen that will allow you to download it. And like I said, it's free, so there's no reason not to download it when it is available. This is part 22 from our series, How to Read Music for Guitar. If you'd like to go back and start at the beginning, you can click the link on the screen. So everything we've been looking at so far in this series has been standard notation. And in this lesson, I want to talk about tab or tablature. And tablature is another form of notation which is easier to read, but it's much more incomplete than standard notation. And most guitars learn tab first if they ever learn standard notation. So a lot of guitars never move on to standard notation. But in this lesson, I want to show you how you can use standard notation to help you read tab. So you can learn the basics of standard notation and use that to help you read tab because like I said, tab by itself is incomplete. And this lesson is more about the difference between the two and how you can use them together. And I am going to explain how to read tab and what it is, but I'm not going to dive into a lot of different markings you'll find in tabs, such as ornamentations like bending and stuff. I have a whole other lesson that does that that I'm going to be releasing soon. So watch that lesson if you're really wanting to dive into how to read tab and read different ornamentations, different notations like sliding and bending and all of that. And there's more than just guitar tab. We're obviously talking about guitar tab in this lesson, but there's tab for other types of instruments as well. And like I said, tab is easier to learn than standard notation, but for the most part, you pretty much have to know what you're trying to play sounds like. It doesn't fill in all the gaps that standard notation does. Standard notation, you can just see a piece of music written. And if you're really good at reading notation, standard notation, you'll be able to play it like it's supposed to sound. You can't really do that with tab. You kind of have to use it in combination with actually listening to whatever it is that you're trying to learn. Because for the most part, tab is telling you where to put your fingers on the fretboard. It's not telling you much else usually. And so obviously this is the staff. This has the treble clef, the key signature, the time signature. You have your bars, you have your lines and your spaces that we've gone over all of this. In tab, you're not going to have any of this information usually unless someone really decides to add it in. But in that case, you need to understand standard notation to even use this stuff. You need to understand the basics of it. You're still going to find bar lines and bars separated out in most cases which follow along right with the standard notation, but the lines represent something totally different. So when you're looking at lines in standard notation, they don't have anything to do with your guitar strings, but in tab they actually do. So this is one way that tab's written. You're gonna see different ways. There's simplified versions as well. If you wanna see those, like I said, watch the other lesson that I did all about tab. But this is one of the better ways to write tab out and make it really easy to read. So you can see you still have lines and spaces. You still have these bar lines, which are nice. You separate out the bars just like standard notation does. But down here, it just says tab. It doesn't show you any time signature, key signature, treble clef, anything like that. And if you're looking at guitar tab, you don't need a clef sign anyway, because it's obviously in the treble clef. But like I said, these lines aren't the same as what you see in standard notation. These lines actually represent your guitar strings. So there's six lines and every line represents one of your strings. And the way it's written is with your sixth string here and your first string here. So in between are your five, four, three, two, and then your one here, six here, like I said. And that's easy to read if you've been watching this series or other series that I've done where I've shown you guitar fretboard charts, they're turned the same way. But if you're not used to that, it's kind of weird because you would think that your sixth string was here and your first string was here, but it's the opposite of that. And so here's an example again of standard music notation. This is an A note. It gives you the clef, it gives you the time signature. There's no key signature showing, which would mean that it's in the key of C or A minor or it just might not be in a key signature because the notes don't really fit well within one key. And this is a whole note. It's telling you how long to hold your note out. And in 4-4 time, you would know that's four beats, which would last a whole measure if you had your bar lines drawn. And with this, you have multiple options on your fretboard where to play. You could play here, 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 here because these are all unison notes or the exact same note. And when you're just looking at standard notation, you have no idea which one of these is meant to be played. It's really up to you to decide where it works best. 
In tab, that's different. In tab, it specifically tells you what place on your fretboard to play. So now looking at tab, again, these are your guitar strings. This two right here is telling you that on your third string right here to play the note in the second fret, which would be right here on your guitar. So with this, you don't have your unison options like you did with standard notation. You can always move it to unison locations. That's up to you if you want to do that. But the reason tab is usually written out in specific spots is because maybe it sounds best there. Maybe that's where the artist originally played it because certain things sound better on different spots on the guitar, even if you're playing unison notes, just because of the thickness of the strings and the vibration of the strings and all that. So if we were to look at something like this, this would be telling you your first note is your open E string because zero means open. So anytime you run across a zero on a string, that means you play it open. This would tell you that you're playing the note on the first fret on the third string. This would be the second fret on the third string, third fret on the second string, second fret on the second string, and so on. Those are what all the numbers represent and they're all representing strings. So these lines represent strings and numbers represent frets. If you see a zero, that means to play the string open. So that's really easy to understand how that works. It's a lot easier to understand the music notation, but this is really incomplete. If you were to look at this, you would have no idea what your rhythm was. You wouldn't know how long to hold any of these notes. You wouldn't know what your time signature was unless someone had written that into the tab, but most people don't. So it's really incomplete. So to be able to play this correctly, you'd have to actually hear the piece that you were trying to play. So then you would hear the piece and then you would use the tab to make it easy to find where all those notes were. But you'd really have to listen to that piece to hear the rhythm, hear how all the notes are hold out and all of that. And that's actually why learning the basics of standard notation really helps you to read tab because you could learn the basic rhythm and note values of standard notations and understand rests, understand key signatures and time signatures. If you can do that, then you could mix it with tab and then you'd be able to have all the information you need. And then of course you would need a tempo of some sort if you're going to play it exactly like something was played before, but a lot of times tempo just depends on whoever's playing the piece. So now if you're to look at this and you weren't really good at sight reading for quickly being able to see what notes were what and finding them on your fretboard, if you understood basic rhythm, you would know these are quarter notes. You would know this is a quarter note rest because tab doesn't write rests in it. So right here you have three notes written. Those values could be anything. Even if you knew this was in four, four time, how would you know there's a rest right here? You wouldn't, that'd be impossible. So that would really affect what's going on with these three notes. But if you were to able to look at standard notation, you could quickly see that these are all three quarter notes. And then you have a quarter note rest right here. Same right here. How would you know that that was a half note, two eighth notes, and a quarter note. You wouldn't be able to do that without looking up and being able to see the standard notation. Same with what's going on here, which would be even more complicated because you have a quarter note, four sixteenth notes, a quarter note, a sixteenth note rest, an eighth note, and another sixteenth note rest. That'd be impossible just by looking at this to know that that was going on right here. Or you could look here and you could guess that that was a whole note because there's only one written in there, but you don't know if that was just a quarter note with rests in it. But if you just do a little bit of studying with standard notation, it's pretty easy to quickly learn note values. And then you can mix that with the tab. And then you have, like I said, all the information you need. You wouldn't necessarily have to listen to the piece to be able to play this. Now there are times where you will see some rhythm written out in tab, which it usually looks something like this. And it's a little tricky to read. For example, this is representing a quarter note. This is a quarter note. This is a quarter note. This right here is a half note. So this line is drawn shorter than the quarter note line. This looks like an eighth note, two eighth notes together. So that's pretty easy. This looks like four sixteenth notes together. That's pretty easy. And this is easy to tell because it has one flag, just like an eighth note. But it's kind of tricky when you're just looking at lines and different lengths that can be tricky to read quickly. And this gives you more information than just standard tab, but still it's not showing rest. So it's a little tricky. It would take some work to figure out what these note values were. You can add these up and go, oh, that's three quarter notes. So this must be a quarter note rest because there's nothing there and go through like that. But that's hard to do quickly when you're just looking at something like this. And still you're typically not going to have a time signature that you could see or a key signature. You'd have to go through and see where all these notes were and then figure out what key it was. So 
Even though this is better, it's still not as good as standard notation, but it's definitely worth being able to read this as well. So like I said, if you really want to dive into tab and how to read more of the notation that can be on tab, check out my other lesson, how to read guitar tab, and that'll really help you out. Like I said, this lesson I really wanted to be the difference between tab and standard notation and how you can use them together. So that's the difference between guitar tab and standard notation. Go to move on to the next lesson where I'm going to talk about rhythm notation and be sure to download the e-guide. All the diagrams are in there and be sure to subscribe because we have at least one new lesson every day.